Hi again, guys. This is Mrs. Allison. Today, we are going to extend the idea that we worked on before of simplifying rational expressions. And this time, we're going to look at multiplying rational expressions. And I think you'll see that it's not that big of a step um, from what we were doing. So let's go back to fourth grade again, and let's talk about fractions. So who remembers what to do when we want to multiply fractions? Okay. Remember when multiplying fractions, we need to multiply, I'm going to abbreviate, multiply the numerator with the numerator, or the numerator by the numerator. My fat finger doesn't allow me to type or write as many words on the line as I think I'm going to be able to. Numerator by numerator, and then multiply denominator by denominator. Okay, so that's, nor does it look very neat today. Okay, so to multiply fractions, think back to, probably you probably did this in fifth grade, right? So you started fractions in fourth grade and moved on to fifth grade. Um, we need to multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So on a basic simple fraction that we've had, like one third, times five sevenths, I would multiply the one times the five and the three times the seven. Now I'm gonna write it out longhand just so you can see it, but I would multiply one times five and that would be over three times seven. Now probably we wouldn't write that step, we would just say five over 21 and then we'd see if we could reduce, okay? Since I can't reduce, that's my final answer. All right. Well, let's make it a little more complicated looking at fractions because I want to look at a method for multiplying fractions that's actually going to lead us into the idea of multiplying rational expressions. Okay, so here it is. This next problem says 9 over 16 times 8 over 21. Now, if we were to go and multiply straight across, so I'm going to do that in a different color to start with. If we were to go and multiply straight across, we would get 9 times 8, which is 72, over 16 times 21, which is 336. You can either use a calculator or take my word for it. And then we would need to simplify. Well, I don't have a calculator in front of me, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, divide everything by 2. So that would give me 36 over uh, 168, which also goes into 2, which would be 18 over 84. Um, which goes down by two and go oh, three. So six would go into both of those. So six goes into 18. I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. Six goes into 18 three times and goes into 84 14 times. So my answer would be three fourteenths. It took me a little bit to get there. Um, but eventually it simplifies. So we start by multiplying straight across nine times eight, 72. 16 times 21, 336, and that gives me 72 over 336, and reduced by a factor of 2, and a factor of 2, and then a factor of 6 happens to go into both of those, um, and that would be my final answer, would be 3 fourteenths. Okay, but there's an easier way. We can cross-cancel. Well, how does cross-canceling work? It works by taking out common factors that are in the numerator and the denominator. So let's look at what that might look like. Okay, if I take out common denominators, so for example, I know I could rewrite 9 as 3 times 3. Now, we probably wouldn't write this longhand. I just want to show you the process. Over 16, I'm going to do that 2 times 8. And then... 8, I'm going to rewrite as 1 times 8, and I'll show you why. Yes, I could do 2 times 4, but let me show you why I'm going to do 1 times 8, over 3 times 7. Okay, so if I go through, I notice that I have a common factor of 3 here and 3 here. And I have a common factor of 8 here and a common factor of 8 here. And now I can multiply straight across. And that gives me 3 times 1, which is 3, and 2 times 7, which is 14. 
seems like a lot quicker way to get there. So if I look for my common factors first and take those out, then I can multiply straight across. Kind of an aha moment because that leads us exactly into multiplying rational expressions. Okay, so let's go through four steps that I'm going to go through when I multiply rational expressions. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to factor the numerator completely. Numerator being the tops of the fractions. I'm going to put numerators because there could be more than one. Numerators completely. Completely means we look for everything. We take out greatest common factor. We do trinomials. We do difference of squares if we need to. We just make sure we cover everything and get it all factored out. And then I'm going to repeat that process only this time for the denominators. So factor the denominators. I don't know why my eyes are not showing up completely. Okay. And then the third step, just like we just did on that, on the basic fraction problem is I'm going to cross out factors if it's in the numerator and the denominator. So I am going to cancel like factors if they are in the numerator I'm going to abbreviate this and denominator so if I have a like factor in the numerator and I have a like factor in the denominator doesn't matter which one I'm going to cancel them okay cancel like factors in the numerator and denominator and then fourth step this is the easiest one we're going to multiply like normal fractions. What does that mean? Well, it means that we are going to multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. Okay, so let's try a couple problems. Okay, here is the first problem that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the problem x over x squared plus 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 2 over 3x squared minus 9x. Okay, this is why we've been practicing factoring. So we're going to go back to our factoring and make sure we get everything. Remember, the first thing we want to do in factoring is the greatest common factor. So I want to make sure that if there's a greatest common factor, I pull it out. Second, look for trinomials. Third, look for a difference of squares or grouping or whatever else it may be. Typically, your most common types of factoring are going to be greatest common factor, trinomials, and the difference of squares. So let's start. Okay, so I am going to look at, well, if I look at just this first numerator on the left-hand side, I have just an x. There's no factoring that I need to do there. So let's look at the denominator on that left-hand side fraction. So I just have an x. When I look at that denominator, what I see is a trinomial. And I know to factor trinomials, because there's no like terms in this, x squared, 3x, and 2. I'm going to use xbox, or I'm just going to look for two numbers that multiply to 2 that add to 3. And since I don't need xbox for that, I'm just going to write those two factors. So I get x plus 2 times x plus 1. Oops. And then I'm going to go factor the right-hand side fraction. So I'm going to start in the numerator. And I see 2x plus 2. So what type of factoring am I going to do here? If you said greatest common factor, you're correct. So I'm going to take out a greatest common factor, and that would be a 2. And that leaves me with x plus 1 over. And then in the denominator, what can I do? I've got 3x squared and a negative 9x. So I am going to do greatest common factor again. And this time I can take out a 3x. And it leaves me with x minus 3. Remember, factoring out a greatest common factor, we should be able to multiply it back in and get the same problem. So you can always check to make sure you can do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for like factors in the numerator and denominator. I'm going to cancel any like factors I have. So I see a factor of x plus 1 here and a factor of x plus 1 here. So those are going to go away. 
I also see another factor that can be a little bit tricky and a little bit hard to remember, but I see the factor of X and X. Those are factors, so they can reduce as well. So now when I go and look at this, my left-hand side fraction here, what I get is a one. Oops, I probably should switch back to the pencil. I get a one over X plus two times two over three X minus three. Now, to be honest, probably I would skip this step. Once I see my factors, all I really need to do now is multiply like normal fractions, which means I need to multiply straight across. So I'm gonna be multiplying the one times the two. So one times two is two. I'm not sure what I'm writing here at the moment. One times two is two. And in the denominator, I've got a lot of factors going on. I've got an X plus two, I've got a three, I've got an X minus three. You ready for some good news? I don't actually want you to multiply those together. I do want you to multiply them, but we can write them in a multiplication fashion without actually doing the multiplication. And this is your final answer. How'd you do? Okay, so here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to pause this video and I would like you to try the problem just to the right of it, the one that says x plus 1 over 3x minus 15 times 8 minus, uh, sorry, 8x minus 80 over x squared minus 9x minus 10 and see what you do and then we'll do it together. You ready to see how you did? Okay, here we go. I'm going to go a little bit faster on this factoring and you can always pause and rewind the video if you need to. So first, the numerator on the top left fraction. I don't have a greatest common factor and I don't have any other way to factor it. So I just get an X plus one. Now the denominator on that same side does have a greatest common factor. It has a three. So I'm going to pull out a three and it leaves me with X minus five. And then my second fraction, I see that I do have a greatest common factor in the top. It's an eight, leaves me with X minus 10 over, and then I have a trinomial. Um, x squared minus 9x minus 10. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10 that add to negative 9. So that means they both can't be negative. One needs to be negative, one needs to be positive. So this is going to be x, oopsies, yikes, it's not getting better. Let's try that again. x minus 10 times x plus 1 because a negative 10 and a positive 1 multiply to negative 10 and a negative 10 and a positive 1 add to negative 9. So now I have it all factored. So I'm going to look for common factors. So I see an x plus 1, I see an x plus 1, and I see an x minus 10, and I see an x minus 10, and I don't see anything else I can do. So I'm just going to multiply these two straight across, and I have nothing in the top here and just an 8 left in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have a 3 times an x minus 5, and again, I'm not going to multiply them. I'm going to leave them in their factored form. And this is my final answer. How'd you do? Okay, there's one thing we haven't done today that we did when we were just simplifying an expression, not multiplying the expressions together, is we looked for excluded values. Well, these still have excluded values. The difference is I'm just not going to ask you to do that right now. I want you to focus on just figuring out how to multiply them. And we'll save the excluded values for when it's only one fraction. Um, but this has excluded value. So I just want to go over it again with you. Remember an excluded value is something that makes the denominator zero. The easiest way to find that is going back to the very first factoring. That means going back to a problem like this before we start reducing, before we start canceling anything and looking at all my terms. So for example, on this first one, X cannot be five because that makes this zero. X cannot be 10 because it makes this fraction zero or this uh, factor zero. And X can't be negative one because it makes this factor zero. So my excluded values would be five, 10, and negative one. Now I'm not gonna ask you to do that, but just so you know that that's still a possibility. Okay, pause the video again, look at the next example and I'm gonna move to the next slide. The X plus seven over seven X plus 35 times X squared minus three X minus 40 over X minus eight and see how you do. Well, how'd you do? Well, let's go through it really quick and just see if you came up with the right answer. Here we go. 
x plus 7 doesn't have any greatest common factors, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And 7x plus 35 does have a greatest common factor, so I'm going to pull out a 7. And leaves me with x plus 5. So there's the left-hand fraction. Now the right-hand fraction. I see a trinomial where a is equal to 1. And so this factors to be x minus 8, x plus 5, oops, over, bottom has, denominator has x minus 8. Okay. That was intended to be a parenthesis. Here we go. Now I'm going to look for common factors. So the common factors that I see, I see an x minus 8 and an x minus 8. And notice they don't have to be on opposite fractions. They just need to have one in the numerator and one in the denominator. And then I see an x plus 5 and an x plus 5. Oops. So anything else? I don't see anything else. And when I go to multiply this straight across, I get a nice answer of x plus 7 over 7. Now, you might be tempted to ask if I can cancel out my 7s, and the answer is no, I cannot. Because this factor right here in the top is x plus 7. It can't be separated just by taking away the 7. So I can't, it's not a like factor with just the 7. But, but that would be a good question. But this is your final answer. How'd you do? Great. Let's move on to a fun one, shall we? This one has a bit more um, types of factoring. So let's look at it. Why don't you hit pause, try it, see how you do, and then come back. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you noticed there's a couple types of factoring here. I see this first problem, x squared minus 4. That's the difference of two perfect squares. And then I see greatest common factor and greatest common factor, and then I get one of these fun trinomials, an Xbox. Um, so I will briefly go through the process of Xbox with you again, just one more time. Um, but let's factor the other parts first. So... Let's start with the x squared minus 4. If that's the difference of two squares, I know I have x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then the denominator, I get um, 3 and an x plus 3. Oh, no I don't. I get x plus 1. Great. Now I'm going to factor the top. And in the top, what I see is a, is a greatest common factor of 6x. And it leaves me with an x plus a 1. Okay, now comes the really fun factoring. So let's go through and do x box. And I'm going to come down to the side over here um, and factor that. So I know to do x box. I need to make an x and I need to make a box. And in my box is going to go a 3x squared and the 2. And I'm going to multiply those two to get 6x squared. And then it needs to add to the b term, so 7x. So I need to multiply to 6x squared, add to 7x. That gives me 6x and 1x is the only way I can do that. So I put those in the box. And then I'm going to pull out the greatest common factor for each row. So my first row is just an x. My next row is a 2. My column is a 3x. My second column is just a 1, it looks like. And a good habit to get into is always check your work. Is x times 3x, 3x squared? Yep. Is x times 1, 1x? Yep. 2 times 3x, 6x? Yes. 2 times 1, 2. Yeah. So my factored trinomial looks like this. I get a 3x plus 1 and an x plus 2. And now I can start to cancel my common factors. So I see an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. Notice I'm not canceling out an x minus 2 and an x plus 2. Those aren't the same. And then I can cancel out the x plus 1s. And then look, there's one more factor. It's kind of different. The 3 can go into the 6 two times. So when I look at this problem and I go straight across, I get 2 x from the left hand or sorry from the right hand fraction multiplied by the x minus 2 over and the only factor that's left in the denominator is the 3x plus 1. Again notice I'm not multiplying anything so this is my final answer. How'd you do? Okay let's look at one last thing. 
This is a weird case that will sometimes come up in the middle of problems. It won't always be just written this way, but it will come up in the middle of problems. And I want to start this weird case by looking at just some values. I'm going to put substitute values in. So let's do this. I am going to let x equal, let's do 3. If I let x equal 3, I get 3 minus 2 over 2 minus 3. So I get 1 over negative 1, which reduces to negative 1. Okay, let's try another number. Let's let x be, let's do a negative 1. Let's do negative 5. Um, if I substitute negative 5 in for x, I'd have negative 5 minus 2 over 2 minus negative 5. Oops, I lost the over part. And if I go and simplify this, I get negative 7 over positive 7, which is negative 1. Wow, ran out of room there. Negative 1. Well, you seeing a pattern yet? Let's try one more. Let's let x be... Mm, let's do 11. 11 minus 2 over 2 minus 11. I get positive 9 over negative 9, which is negative 1. Do you see a pattern? So keep in mind, x minus 2 and 2 minus x are not the same factor. But they are equivalent to negative 1. So I can reduce that to be a factor of negative 1. Okay, keep that in mind. That's the only weird or one of the weird cases that we could come across. All right, so your assignment for this is a math Excel assignment called Multiplying Rational Expressions. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good day, guys.